Welcome to Punching Above Your Weight. This is a podcast that tells the story of people overcoming adversity to reach their goal. We're all told that losing weight is impossible. Well, join me as I learn from the people who have proved that theory wrong. I hope you enjoy. All right, welcome back to episode 20 of Punching Above Your Weight. Uh, this week, we're doing something a little bit different. This week, uh, it's just me. I'm not interviewing anyone. Uh, it's more of an educational uh, episode, if you like. Um, just, you know, the questions I, I, I get asked from clients all the time, I try and simplify things as best I can. And, and one is always around calories. So uh, I'm going to talk about calories, if that's all right. Now, this is a bit of a visual uh, episode. So I will be doing my best to uh, try and explain things for those that are just listening to the audio of this episode. Uh, but we will be creating a, uh, um, excuse me, a blog out of this episode. So you'll be able to go there and have a look at the visuals uh, at the very same time if you like. But I'll do my very best to describe it as effectively as I can. All right. So this week, I'm going to talk to you all about calories. Okay, don't fall asleep yet. This is a a really important topic, okay? It's all about comprehending calories or really it's about mastering calories quickly is what I want to call it because um, they're confusing. You know, most people get overwhelmed at the thought of, you know, even have to think about calories. Kilojoules are for in Australia. That's what I should be using. Um, But a lot of people in Australia still use calories. Um, But it's important. It's an important concept to understand, but it's also an important concept to understand that you shouldn't get too bogged down in them. So hopefully this will clarify for a lot of people uh, and it'll make a lot of sense. And if you listen right to the end, I've got a little downloadable that everyone can have that I'm hoping, you know, will be a really useful resource for them uh, moving forward in the future. All right. So boring old calorie in calorie out equation okay to lose any sort of body fat it's about putting in less calories than what your body burns yes low carb works keto works high protein works but they work because they're creating a calorie deficit okay they are putting in less calories from carbohydrate um, or you know whatever it might be so it's whenever you're restricting certain food groups you're essentially cutting calories and if that, if that food group was a very big part of your diet previously then you're going to cut a lot of calories and it's going to be quite successful for you but the mechanism that's driving it is still the amount of calories that the, the deficit that you've created by putting them in okay only four things provide it alcohol protein carbs and fat they're the only four things that provide calories in our diet okay so we go and eat them uh, and then we've got to go burn them off. And if we don't burn them off, we've got ourselves in excess of calories. And that means the body has to store it as fat. Whereas if we don't put in enough calories, then the body is going to break that fat down and convert it to energy. And essentially, that's how we lose it. Now, how I get people to approach calories, though, is that because it's quite easy to get bogged down and think you've got to have this finite knowledge of them, okay? But understanding calories is, is like understanding exactly how many litres of fuel is in your car. Okay, no one knows exactly how many litres of fuel is in your car. You just don't know. But does it pay to, to have no idea of how much fuel is in your car? No, that, that's problematic in itself because you could be running out of fuel. You know, So understanding calories is, is like knowing roughly where that fuel gauge is. Okay, Am I quarter full, half full, three quarters full? Because if you've got no idea, then there's a big chance that you're putting in too many calories or potentially not enough. Um, and so it's important to get an understanding, but you've really got to let go of the precise number and think that it's exact. Because I'm going to show you a few examples today that that really, uh, I guess, um, demonstrate that that a precise knowledge just isn't really what you need. Okay. Now, the the other thing to factor in here, guys, is that a kilogram of body fat okay, is worth anywhere from 30,000 kilojoules or about 7,000 calories, okay? There's debate of, about exactly what it is, but, but you know, there is a value and it's high and it's up in that ballpark, okay? So, you know, to drop a kilo of body fat, you've got to create a big enough deficit. You know, we're talking 30,000 kilojoules. You've got to create a deficit in order to drop that kg of body fat. Now, it's not as straightforward as that because the body compensates. There's, there's metabolic changes. I'm not going to bore you with that today, but it's still a useful thing to know is that there, there is a value to a kilo of body fat. And if you want to drop those kilos of body fat, you've got to understand just how much of a deficit you've got to create. So if a kilo of body fat is worth 30,000 kilojoules or around 7,000 calories, you can't drop that off in a day. 
you know, the average person might need 8,000 kilojoules in a day, or they might need, you know, 2,000 calories if we're talking calories. Um, so you can't drop 30,000 out of that or 7,000 calories out of that. You can only take small increments every day. So it's important to understand that concept. You can't drop it out in a day. It's the accumulative effect of what you're doing, okay? And now what people do is they go and track, excuse me, what people do is they go and track calories. Now, I'm a massive fan of tracking calories for a period of time. If you want to do it long-term, then that's fine by me as well. But it's also really important to understand just what you're getting back. Because when you use any of these apps, and there's some great apps out there, um, when you use these apps, they might appear that there's a real precision around calories. And there's actually nothing further from the truth because the thing is, um, you know, we, we can pull two bits of fruit, two apples off the same tree, and they're going to have slightly different calories in them. But if you put an apple into an app, it's all the, you know, depending on the size, it's going to look like there's an exact amount of calories in it. And there's so many factors that affect it that it's just not that accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a heap of foods here, okay? So for our audio listeners, this will be in the blog. But um, currently on the page, I've got two bowls of cereal with fruit. Both look really healthy, okay? One uh, is some oats, yogurt, cranberries, chia seed, raspberries, and some sultanas. The other one is blueberries, raspberries, chia seeds, cranberries, yogurts, and some oats or um, more like a muesli, really. Okay, now they look very identical, but there's a 170 calorie difference in these two meals. Okay, so 170 calories. We're talking kilojoule wise, just shy of 800 kilojoules in that one meal. Now, if that's exacerbated over the day, you know, we're talking, um, you know, let's say three meals and a couple snacks, but we might be three or 4,000 kilojoules out or 1,000 calories out over the day. And that then eats into that deficit that you think you're creating because what happens is when people are inputting this data into an app like MyFitnessPal or Easy Diet Diary here in Australia is probably the best one, um, they might say, okay, a serve of oats or a handful of oats. And there's some really vague details around that. Um, And this is where the inaccuracy just blows out considerably because you know, we're, we're, we're estimating how much is going in there. And, and for anyone that can look at these two images, you can see that there's not much separating them on appearance. And you've then got to try and estimate accurately how many, how much of certain foods are going in there. And then it blows out the numbers quite significantly. And there evaporates your ability to create a calorie deficit. Okay. Let me just bear with me because it might sound like I'm suggesting not to use a tracking app or, you know, just to give up on calories. And that's not the answer either. Either I'm going to show you a pretty simplified way to, to sort of, um, you know, control this, if you like. The next image is a big heap of veggies. Uh, looks like a little bit of uh, halloumi cheese and chicken in there, but both are very colorful, very, very appealing dishes. Okay. Um, now, the difference between these two, is over 400 calories. That's nearly, that's 2,000 kilojoules pretty much, um, which is huge. There goes your deficit in one meal. That's massive. You know, so if you're trying to lose weight, how do you estimate that dish? It's really, really difficult. And both are quite healthy. Okay, both are very healthy meals, but there's a there's a bit of a difference there between what you're putting in. The next one is like a fried rice with a bit of chicken. Uh, and it's, it's interesting. One is certainly more colorful. Okay. And what I tell my clients is that when you're cooking fried rice, it should really be fried vegetables with a speckle of rice in it. And that's exactly what the one is on the uh, right hand side. Whereas the one on the left is more like fried rice with some token veggies scattered through it. Okay. And it has a little bit more chicken, but it's not, you know, to the um, naked eye, it doesn't look overly uh, excessive in chicken compared to the one on the right. But the difference between these two is over 300 calories. Okay. It's 355 calories. So again, if this is one meal, there's your deficit pretty much gone in the whole day. So uh, the next dish is a rice and stir fry on the left hand side. Okay. And a cauliflower rice and stir fry on the right. Now, again, first appearance doesn't look like there's a big difference between these. Okay. There's slightly more protein like meat on that one on the left. Um, this the one on the right, certainly more vegetables. And because I've used cauliflower rice versus normal rice, it creates a pretty big calorie deficit. We're talking five, nearly 500 calories here. And again, there goes the deficit that you're aiming for in order to lose weight. Now, the recommendation, okay, when I left university, and it's still much the same, is that in order to lose weight, 
you need to sort of estimate what someone's maintenance requirements are. So what's their maintenance re requirements? Or, well, that's the amount of energy or calories or kilojoules that their body needs to keep their weight exactly where it is. Okay, so in order to lose weight, you've got to work out what that is. Um, and really, we're guessing, you know, in our clinics, we used to do indirect calorimetry and actually measure their metabolism. There's still some estimating involved with that in terms of physical activity. Um, but these predictive equations, are, they are a guess. They're an educated guess based on some data, um, but we're still guessing. But they, they, they serve as a great starting point. So you've got to work out what that is. And then you actually have to then create a calorie deficit from that. And the standard recommendation is to drop 500 calories or 2,000 kilojoules off their maintenance requirements. Now, it's safe to go to 1,000 calories or 4,000 kilojoules, um, you know, particularly if someone's up the BMI scale a fair bit and they need to drop it a bit faster. Um, but as you can see with these meals, if there's a 500 calorie difference with what you're inputting into a calorie tracking app, then your deficit has evaporated. It's gone. There's nothing there. And then you know, I would have clients that would come back to me and they're like, well, I don't know what's happening. I'm, you know, I'm tracking. This is what I'm eating. It's exactly what I'm eating. Um, and, you know, I'm just not losing the weight. Um, and so my workaround to this is it's really important. Um, there's, sorry, there's one more dish there. I might as well show it. This one is, again, both a very healthy dish. This one's some chicken, uh, sweet potato, some little bit of feta and some um, quinoa and tomato and, and um, leaves. And it's the difference in that one. Oops. The difference in that one is 300 calories. So again, that, that, that deficit is evaporated. Are you tired of wasting so much time and mental space on trying to eat healthy? Introducing Mealsy. Mealsy is a meal planning app where with just a few simple clicks, you can create a meal plan that contains only dietitian created recipes. You select your food preferences, any foods you wish to avoid and your goals. And in a matter of seconds, you have a meal plan fit with shopping lists, recipe instructions, and all the nutrition information to give you the confidence that you're eating the right food for you and your family. Go to mealsy.com. That's M-E-A-L-Z-E-E.com. -E Thanks. So my workaround for clients on this one is to basically put color at every meal, okay? Um, I would have clients come back and they would say, this is exactly what I'm eating. They've put something into the app and there's virtually no vegetables or salad or minimal fruit there. So the margin of error is going to be massive. Like if they estimate, you know, if they input a, a cup of fried rice that's got bugger or vegetables in it versus a cup of fried rice, uh, sorry, versus what they're actually eating might be two cups of fried rice or a cup and a half. And if you look at that on a plate, it's not drastically different. So it is easy to underestimate. Um, and so you can see then that the calories could blow out. Now, if they've got a load of vegetables in there, okay, so if, if it is a fried rice that is fried veggies with a speck of rice through it, and they are out by half a cup, then the numbers just do not blow out as badly as what they do if the vegetables aren't there. So it's a really important concept. Make sure you've got plenty of colour. Lots of colour should dominate the plate. So when I say colour, I'm not talking Skittles or m ms I'm talking veggies, salad, fruit. Load up the dish, okay? So if it's breakfast, we're talking a ton of berries. And as you're about to learn, these are low calorie or low kilojoule fruits. So you load up your breakfast with them. Lunches and dinners are full of salad or vegetables. You know, your low starch veggies in particular are great. You can really load up most dishes with them. They don't have a lot of flavor. Uh, you can, you know, absorb the flavor of a stir fry or a curry or a casserole, but you're using those veggies to bulk the dish out. And then the emphasis or reliance on calories or getting them accurate isn't as important. Now, I do encourage that you still use a tracking app. Why do I encourage that? Well, it's so that you get a good understanding of roughly where these foods sit. It's like looking at a fuel gauge. Are you quarter full, half full, three quarters full? You need that comprehension because having no fuel gauge at all, you're driving around having no idea. Okay, so same with calories. If you've got zero idea, how do you create a calorie deficit? It's pretty hard. Um, so what I've put together here, now this, this next series of pages, um, again, I do apologize for the audio listeners, but this will be available as a download on the um, blog page that we create, and you'll, you'll see that in the show notes. Um, but you'll be able to download this as a downloadable so you can just refer to it. So basically what I've done here is I've, I've broken, you know, your core foods, don't have a lot of commercial products here, it's mostly all your core foods. Um, I've broken them down into four categories. And the analogy I use is that we want to be eating foods that you can eat a lot of, 
without the bucket overflowing, okay? So most people get that analogy. If the bucket's overflowing, you've got an excess of energy, you're going to gain body fat, right? So you want foods that you can eat a lot of without that overflow, without that weight gain. And so I've broken them down into foods that are under 400 kilojoules per 100 grams, okay? These are colored green for those that are watching. Um, those that are between 400 to 800 kilojoules per 100 grams are blue, Orange is between 800 and 1200, and then anything over 1200 is, is fairly calorie dense. So, what, what it means, or kilojoule dense, since I've got kilojoules on the board. So, anything that's colored green in this downloadable means that you can have decent portions of it, and the calories or the kilojoules are quite low in it. So, there's, there's little fear of gaining weight if the bulk of your dish is coming from this green group. Okay. And then, right at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the red where the foods actually don't have to be that big in volume or quantity, but the calories can still be quite high. So these are the ones you've got to pay a lot of attention to with how much you're actually eating. doesn't mean don't eat them by any means. It just means you've got to learn and be aware of the amount. Okay, so what I've done, uh, again, I'll, I'll explain as best I can for the audio listeners, but I've broken this down into per surf, okay, and per 100 grams. So on the left there, it's all per 100 grams. So for example, a cucumber, which will be no surprise to most people, uh, is for 100 grams contains 50 kilojoules, okay? And it's green because there's, you know, half a kilojoule per, uh, per gram. So it's, so it's very low in kilojoules. You can eat a lot of it with um, very little fear of gaining weight. Now, what does 100 grams of cucumber looks like? Well, I've got no idea. So I've also created the portion size of it. So four medium slices, um, weighs about 40 grams. And for that, you'll get about 20 kilojoules. So it's there for you at the same time. So you can see here, this is the salad page. I've broken them down into food groups, okay? So the salads are all on this page. Most, again, no great surprise, are green. So um, you've got olives, which are actually the highest, okay? For 100 grams of olives, it's you know 856 kilojoules, so about 200 calories. But who's eating 100 grams of olives? Not many people. So you know if you eat four olives, you're still only getting about 137 kilojoules, which is you know, 30 odd calories. So it's pretty good from that perspective. So no, no great surprises there. The, the biggest one that most people I, I sort of stress need to be aware of is avocado um, because it does contain a lot of calories. Um, it's not excessive. It's not like you're eating, you know, a deep fry whatever, um, but it does contain calories that pays to have an awareness of them. Uh, all right. So then the next page is vegetables, okay? Again, no great surprises here. You can see all are green, even potatoes, which cop a really bad rap, okay? For 100 grams of potatoes, now these are all the raw weights. Of course, you can deep fry or bake potatoes and that changes the calories drastically. Turn them into chips is a, is a big problem. But the raw potato itself is actually not too bad. There's about 277 kilojoules, which is about 70, 60, 70 calories uh, per 100 grams. So, so even potato, which has probably got the worst uh, reputation of all the veggies isn't too bad, providing you're not over, overeating them. Um, garlic is the highest per 100 gram, but of course, we're not eating 100 grams of garlic, we're only having a clove. So there's, there's bugger all in that. Then we have the fruits. Again, the fruits are pretty good. Uh, most of the fruits are pretty good. It's only really banana. Um, that's slightly into the next category. Everything else is green. It's just banana that just leaps over into the blue. Um, and if we want to call avocado a fruit, then it's there as well. Then we get into the meats. Okay, so meat um, is actually pretty lean. You know, per 100 gram, most raw versions of the meat are, are you know, sort of well under the 800 kilojoules. Uh, the one that's the highest, believe it or not, um, if you're listening on audio and you're not seeing this, you know, try and guess in your mind, but is it steak or is it salmon? It's actually salmon. Um, now, this is a bit unfair because you can't really remove the fat from salmon, whereas all these other cuts are lean cuts. Um, now, salmon is one of the healthiest things you can eat, full of omega-3, great for the brain, great for the heart, but uh, it still pays to be aware that, you know, if you're eating a lot of salmon, there's a lot of calories that your body's got to deal with. So you certainly eat it regularly. You just got to be conscious of the amount. And, and the amounts is a really important thing to factor in here because, you know, um, these are all per 100 grams if, you, if you're looking at the, the protein portions. But, you know, where I'm from originally, there's a, there's a hotel there that serves a one kilogram steak and it's fried and the fat is on it. OK, so we're, we're talking 6,000 to probably seven or 8,000 when you include the fat and how it's cooked in that one steak. And it could be a badge of honor if someone's gone and eaten that. But well, they've got an excess that day when they've done it. So it, it pays to be aware of these portions. And that's what the apps are great for. It gives you some sort of idea of, of where these foods fit. 
Then we've got the dairy, and, and no surprises there for many people. Probably cheese is the highest per 100 gram, but if you're pretty good at portioning out, it's not going to be too bad. Um, nuts is one that I do need to stress, okay? So nuts are really high in calories, okay? They are, for 100 gram of macadamias, is about 3,000 kilojoules, which is about 700 calories. Um, so a quarter of a cup of nuts uh, if, of macadamias is about 1,000 kilojoules or two 250 calories so they're right up there now they're also one of the healthiest foods you can eat so this is where it can people can become confused so again this is where i stress using an app is is all about you learning and teaching yourself where these foods fit it doesn't mean don't eat these foods it just means be aware of the portions uh, and then we have breads and and um some crackers there that you can have a look at um, most aren't too bad, but you know, bread is quite high per 100 gram, but you know, typically we're eating anywhere from 60 to 80 grams. So you're looking at around sort of 600 to 800 kilojoules in a couple of slices of bread. Um, a lot of wraps are very similar. So you, you can just get an idea on this page. Okay, this uh, second last page, I believe it is, is the discretionary foods. Um, now this is just the foods that you might get at a takeaway shop or you know that you've bought and bought into the house. Um, and it's the ones that, you know, like they're, they're our treat, but they're the ones that people don't track. So people don't put these in their app because they don't want to know about it. But these are the foods you want to know. What's your favorite food? Okay, so a bit of white chocolate mud cake, a slice, the average slice of that is 3,000 kilojoules, 700 calories. So it very quickly eats into any chance you have of creating a calorie deficit. Okay, so learning about these, you know, treats or discretionary foods is really important. Um, alcohol is not too bad per 100 gram, but how many people are only having 100 grams? You know, the average stubby is 330 or 375 mil. Um, glass of wine, everyone says I only have two glasses a night, but the bottle only lasts me two nights, so it means that my glass is about 180 mil. Um, so it's important to understand how much you're actually having. And then the last page, sorry, this is the last page, is just those common meals that you might put together. Okay, now these are really hard to quantify. If you're trying to put this into an app, how do you do it? You know, unless you're putting all the ingredients from scratch, it's really difficult. But if you look at um, probably two of my favorite dishes, excluding pizza, it's my favorite of all time. Um, but two dishes there, we've got um, the risotto and a creamy pasta, like a carbonara, two cups, which actually isn't that big when you, you put place that out. Um, and they're 4,700 or 4,800 kilojoules and 4,600 kilojoules respectively. So, you know, they're well over 1,000 calories, probably, what are we, 1,100 calories each, okay, per meal. You know, there's a, that's a big chunk of the day gone in just that one meal. So learning about these favourites is really important at the same time. So this downloadable... Um, you'll be able to um, grab this on the blog page, okay? You can click um, and, uh, you know, get this emailed to you. And it's basically got all that information. And I've broken it down then on the back to the four pages. So it's got all of the um, categories all on the one page, so all the green foods, all the blue foods, all the amber foods, and then all the red foods are all there on the one page for you to have a look at. All right. So lastly, guys, this is why we have created a meal planning app. Okay, so we've created a meal planning app called Mealsy. It's not uh, ready for release yet, but we are looking for beta testers. And what this does is does all the thinking for you because, um, as you can see, calories, kilojoules can be complicated. And trying to work this out yourself um, is you know, a challenge. You know, it's a challenge for a dietitian. So it's it's and you know we're trained in this area, so it can be challenge uh, challenging for anyone who sort of doesn't have that background. So um, what this does, the, this is a meal planning app with a few simple clips, clicks. You can create a meal plan based on your preferences. So if you need foods excluded, you exclude them. If you want high protein or high fiber or low carb or whatever it might be, it'll produce recipes that are tailored to your needs. Now, the benefit of it, okay, is when dietitians, so dietitians from everywhere can enter recipes. It's only dietitian created recipes. No one else can enter recipes. Dietitians are given a guideline that the measures need to be uh, objective. So they're not vague. Okay, you can't say a serve of nuts or a handful or a drizzle of oil or something. It's it's in teaspoons and tablespoons and cups and grams. And, and the idea of that is, is so there's not that much ambiguity when it comes to putting a recipe together. You then get a stepwise approach to putting it together and, and there you, you will 
um, ability to, to keep on top of the calories are going to be much better served than if you're trying to sort of estimate and do that yourself, okay? I'm not saying don't use a calorie tracking app, by the way. I still stress it's important for people to learn about how many calories are in their diet and roughly where they're coming from. But if you are short on time and you just don't have the mental energy, then an, an app like Mealsy um, is certainly something that I think could benefit you. And it's, it's why I created it because, um, you know, the, I, I see this, I, it's a problem that I face daily, you know, like trying to work this out. If I can click a button, I can create a meal plan for my family, um, you know, under a minute. And then we're, I'm confident in what I'm eating over that next week. All right, guys, that is us for Punching Above Your Weight this week. So like I said, slightly different episode, episode 20. Um, and we will do a few more of these, but um, yeah, the um, we'll still stick with our, our main theme, which is interviewing uh, people who have battled obesity and, and just the adversity they've faced. I hope you enjoyed this new segment. Um, let me leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something from this podcast. Please subscribe. And if you have your own story to tell, please email us at hello at scoot.co. Thanks.